Finding Nemo, a bedtime story for children. Today we have a book named Finding Nemo, a bedtime story for children. I think they're so pretty. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories. Thank you, reading. So, here we go. Finding Nemo story is really very popular and very interesting Disney bedtime story for little age kids. This is a story about one Nemo named Fish. One day, Nemo is get to be locked from their family. Read the full story to know more about how Nemo finds their family again. Marlin was a clownfish, but that didn't mean he had to find life funny. Marlin had lost his wife and more than 400 eggs in a ruthless barracuda attack. Only one egg had survived, but he had a damaged thigh. I promise I will never let anything happen to you, Nemo, Marlin said. After Nemo was born, Marlin wouldn't let him out of his sight. Marlin was so protective, he didn't even like Nemo going beyond their sea anemone home. But on his first day of school, Nemo was ready for an adventure. Wake up, wake up, come on, Nemo exclaimed, swimming circles around his sleeping father. Before they set off for school, Marlin asked sternly, What's the one thing we have to remember about the ocean? It's not safe, Nemo sighed. As they swam to school together, Marlin kept reminding Nemo to hold his feet. Nemo made friends with some of his classmates, and they sneaked off together, daring each other to swim out into the open sea. Nemo was nervous and didn't venture very far, but it was way too far for Marlin, who was hovering nearby. You think you can do these things, but you just can't, Marlin shouted. Suddenly, a diver appeared. Daddy, help me! Nemo screamed as he caught sight of his reflection in the diver's mask. In a flash, the diver had scooped Nemo up in a net. As the boat sped away, a diver's mask fell overboard. Marlin raced to the surface, but there was nothing he could do to save his precious son. 35. Marlin rushed to a busy underwater road to get help. Has anybody seen a boat? he cried. A beautiful blue tang named Dory told him that she had seen a boat. Follow me, she said. However, Dory had a very bad memory. One minute later, she couldn't even remember why Marlin was following her. Will you quit it? she asked. Confused, Marlin turned to swim away, only to come face to face with a huge shark. The shark was called Bruce, and he was trying to be a vegetarian. He befriended Dory and Marlin and wanted them to meet his like-minded buddies so they could prove their motto, Fish are friends, not food. The self-help sharks held their meetings in a wrecked submarine. It has been three weeks since my last fish, Bruce told his friends proudly. Just then... Marlin spotted the diver's mask, 37. Dory wanted to show the mask to the sharks, but Marlin didn't. As they tussled, Dory bumped her nose and it bled a little. Bruce got a sudden craving for a fish dinner. As Dory and Marlin tried to escape, something exploded. Meanwhile, Nemo found himself in a dentist's fish tank in Sydney. A group of fish came out of hiding. Bubbles, Peach, Jacques, Bloat, Deb, and Gurgle were thrilled to meet a fish from the open sea. Later, Nemo learned that he was to be a present for the dentist's niece, Darla. She's a fish killer, whispered Pete. That night, a ceremony was held to make Nemo an official member of their group. Afterward, Gil... The leader of the gang revealed his plan to escape from the tank. Back in the ocean, Dory had dropped the mask into a deep trench, 
She and Marlin swam after it. Suddenly, Dory remembered she could read. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Dory read from the mask strap. The pair were so excited, they knew where to find Nemo. A school of moonfish told Dory how to get to Sydney. Follow the East Australian Current, they said. Then, they gave her a warning. When you come to a trench, swim through it, not over it. When they finally got to the trench, however, Marlin insisted that swimming over it would be much safer. Soon they were surrounded by stinging jellyfish. They needed help. Some sea turtles rescued Marlin and Dory. Their run-in with the jellyfish had left them in bad shape. Taking on the jellies! Awesome! exclaimed Crush, a surfer turtle. Marlin watched as Crush encouraged his children to be adventurous. He thought it taught them important lessons. Watching Crush's kids made Marlin wonder if he had been too protective of Nemo. Tales of Marlin's adventures were spreading far and wide. Nigel, a friendly pelican who knew the tank gang, eventually heard the stories and rushed to tell Nemo the incredible news. Nemo was amazed. He had always thought his dad was a bit of a scary fish. Inspired by his dad's bravery, Nemo was determined to escape. To his friend's horror, Nemo darted into the filter and jammed it. Everyone cheered. Very soon, the tank gang was swimming in slimy green water. Doc. Sherman was going to have to clean the tank before Darla arrived. Back in the ocean, Marlin and Dory said goodbye to the turtles, but soon found themselves swallowed up inside the mouth of a massive whale. It's okay, I speak whale, Dory assured Marlin. He either said we should move to the back of his throat, or he wants a root beer float, she translated. It turned out the whale was only giving the two brave little fish a lift. They were soon squirted out of the whale's blowhole, right into Sydney Harbor. They landed on the dock and were surrounded by a flock of hungry seagulls. Luckily, Nigel rushed to their rescue. Hop inside to live, he whispered. Nigel snatched them up, filled his beak with some water, and took off. The hungry seagulls followed. Nigel played a trick on them, and the seagulls flew right into a boat's sail. My mouth, if you want. Inside, the dentist had cleaned the tank water with a fancy new automated cleaner, while the fish was still in the tank. The escape plan was ruined. Nemo was lifted out of the tank and plopped into a bag. Darla had arrived. Nemo had one last chance. He played dead, hoping that he would get flushed down the toilet and out into the ocean. Nigel stumbled through the window with Marlin and Dory. They saw Nemo floating upside down in the plastic bag. The dentist quickly shooed Nigel away. In the commotion, the dentist dropped Nemo and the bag burst open. I didn't do any fishy, squealed Darla as she reached out to grab him. Gil flipped himself out of the tank and onto the tray beside Nemo. Tell your dad, I said, he said. Then Gil smacked his tail on a dental mirror, catapulting Nemo over Darla's waiting hands and into the spit sink. The little fish escaped down the drain. Back in the harbor, Nigel dropped Dory and Marlin into the sea. Marlin was heartbroken. He thought that he had lost Nemo for good and swam off to be on his own. Nemo soon met Dory. At first she had no memory of who he was, but finally she did remember. Dory knew she had to reunite Nemo with his dad straight away. Together, they swam after Marlene as fast as Nemo's little fins would let them. There was a happy reunion between Marlin and Nemo. Marlin finally realized that even though Nemo was a little fish, he was capable of doing very big things. 
they had both learned that life was an adventure to be lived to the full. Meanwhile, the tank gang was having an adventure of their own. They had finally made their escape, but now they just had to find a way to get out of the bag. The End Good job, friends. Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye, I'll see you next time.